Hello and welcome, my name is Pankaj Dubey and in this video we are going to talk about functional testing and its types. So the very first functional testing as we have seen in the chart uh, in the previous slides, the very uh, first testing is called unit testing where the individual development team or individual developers their piece of code or the segment of code once they are done with their development of the code they perform the unit testing of their code to make sure that individually each segment is working properly okay and uh, there are different different unit testing models or uh, you can say frameworks available in market so for uh, java development some unit testing frameworks are like junit and testng and if you talk about visual studio or the c sharp or the visual basic net then there are two frameworks called microsoft visual studio test framework and uh, other one is an unit framework so once the development is done and the unit testing has been performed the other phase is called integration testing where the two different different segments will be integrated with each other and tester will check whether it is working properly when integrated or uh, when two or more segments are integrated with each other okay so this sort of testing will be performed after the after performing the unit testing and there are different different approaches of performing the integration testing like top down or the bottom up approach so depending upon that there will be two terms which will be referred called stubs and drivers so stubs and drivers are the dummy piece of code called in to create an integrated environment where some work is not completed yet or not available for testing so let's say that you are integrating two, modu uh, two modules of the code and you are expecting the third module to be displayed but that third module is not developed yet and until unless you do not verify the third module your test case will not be passed so you will introduce some piece of code in such a way so that once you integrate the module 1 and 2 it will get a response like the module 3 has been displayed so this is why this concept of stubs and drivers comes into the picture so stubs are used during top down integration approach and drivers are used in the bottom up integration approach the concept is same it's just that the term will change depending upon the uh, integration approach okay now smoke and sanity this is the most asked in, uh, interview question that what is smoke and what is sanity and there is really very rare difference between the smoke and sanity so smoke and sanity testing is also called the build verification testing or the confidence testing because this is the very initial uh, testing which will be performed once the development team will hand over their uh, or once the development team will deploy their code on the testing server or the testing site because here the tester will check all the critical functionalities whether it is working properly or not so until unless all the major functionalities are not working the development uh, sorry the, de the testers team will not be able to perform the other sort of testing on that uh, testing uh, version okay so the motive of this testing is to ensure that the major and critical functions are working as expected so that the test team can get enough level of confidence about the application's stability and can an execute the other testing types so let's take an example of smoke and sanity so far you can see that both terms smoke and sanity are referring the same thing checking the critical functionalities okay it will depend it will depend upon the your stability or the application that when to refer uh, smoke and when to say sanity while you will be performing the same type of testing okay the example is like url is accessible or not so until unless your url is not accessible you won't be able to perform any other types of testing if you are working on a website okay and user is able to log in the payment is being successful or not so until unless these major functionalities are not working then you will not be able to execute so many other testing test cases so this is why this is very important to perform the smoke and sanity at the very beginning stage of the testing so now what's the difference here between smoke and sanity because they are both uh, referring the same thing checking the critical functionalities so once uh, you start working on any uh, project then there will be some very initial versions of the application which will be relatively unstable because whenever you perform, perform the regression testing you will discover more number of bugs okay and when you will be done with like 10 or 15 rounds of regression testing then you will see that a regression testing is finding very minimum number of bugs okay so uh, regression testing means checking the all old functions of your application so here you can see uh, this is uh, red will be uh, is it's I mean referring an unstable version of the app 
usually the very initial versions of the app like version 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 and uh, when each round of regression test discovers huge number of bugs then it will be relatively unstable version of the app and when you are performing the critical checks on your unstable version of the app then it will be called as smoke testing and later when you start discovering minimum number of bugs while performing the regression testing then checking the critical functionalities will be called as sanity testing or sanity checks now functionality regression and retesting functionality testing means checking all the new or modified features in the latest deployment okay so for any new release of the product testing the added or modified requirement is called functional testing Functional testing is done to check that all the business functionalities are working ok as expected and it will fulfill the end user's requirement. Now regression testing. When a new function is added or an existing application function is modified then checking the existing or the old features is called the regression testing as the newly added modified feature may create some side effect for the existing features. This testing is done after every release. Regression test suite uh, shall be updated after every new release. So let's see what is the difference between functionality and regression testing. So here you can see there was already existing application version 1.0 and it has uh, uh, some features like requirement A, B and C and then the new version came version 2.0 with new features D, E, F. Okay, so for if you are going to perform the testing for this new release then you will be performing the functional testing for requirement D, E and F and you will perform regression testing for requirements A, B and C because these functions are the old functions. Similarly, if any uh, now version 3.0 has been introduced and uh, now some new features like requirement G, H, I has been introduced or uh, uh, deployed in the new release of version 3.0 then all the older functions requirement A, B, C and D, E, F. D, E, F in previous version was the covered in functional testing but now it will be covered as part of the regression testing because this is the uh, old function now and requirements G, H, I is the new uh, feature that has been added as part of the version 3.0 of the app so this will be covered as part of the functionality testing. Now retesting. Once a bug is fixed, then checking the same functionality again to ensure that the bug fix is ok is called retesting. This testing is done to ensure that bug fix is working ok and based on that the bug status will be updated as fixed or reopened. So whenever you raise a bug and developers fix the bug, then uh, you are supposed to again execute the same test case to ensure that the bug fix is ok and if you find that the bug fix is ok then you will be marking your bug status as verified fixed and in case if it is not working still then in that case you will have to reopen the bug and re uh, again uh, it, uh, assign it to someone who is responsible for that. System testing. Once you are done with the, your functional testing uh, then you will perform the whole system uh, uh, whole so you will see that whole system is working ok and that is what called system testing. So let's see what it is. System testing is testing the whole system in integrated environment with all necessary software and hardware. Usually performed in end to end testing environment. So what happens uh, nowadays the business scenarios are being complex as you well. Ok so uh, let's suppose you uh, there is a business scenario where three systems are working with each other like system A, B and C and you are supposed to work on system A and you only receive system A in testing environment. Ok so usually you will not receive system B and C at the same time when you are performing the system A testing. So performing the system A's testing in, uh, in collaboration with system B and C will be called as system testing. What is exploratory testing now? There are uh, certain instances where what happens test, test team do not receive any uh, documented requirement or any verbal requirement from the stakeholder or the, or the business team and they are frankly asked to perform the testing for their any uh, existing application. In that case what tester uh, do is they will simply keep exploring the application and simultaneously they will keep checking for the bugs in the application and this is what called exploratory testing. 
now UAT. UAT is usually, usually the last phase of uh, testing and UAT stands for user acceptance testing where the product is evaluated as per the end user's requirement. It will be performed by the end users or the stakeholders. Product is evaluated that whether it matches with business requirement or not and whether to accept or reject that particular product. Usually the last type of testing in the testing life cycle and the UAT has two types alpha testing and beta testing. So alpha testing is a testing which will be performed by a test team by a dedicated test team who will represent the end user and beta testing will be performed by the actual end users. Like you must have seen some uh, application with beta version or so you must have seen some uh, website with beta version. So that means it is still in the development phase and uh, sorry it is still in the testing phase and you can provide your feedback by uh, there, there might be some uh, options. So now what's the difference between alpha testing and beta testing? Alpha testing is performed by testers in testing environment while performed by re uh, while beta testing is performed by real end users in live environment. Alpha testing performed at developer site and beta testing is performed at client location or end user of the product. Alpha testing comes before beta testing and beta testing is usually performed after uh, performing the alpha testing. Alpha testing involves both the white box and black box uh, techniques. Beta testing typically uses black box testing. Alpha testing is conducted within the organization and tested by representative group of end users and beta testing is conducted by the end users. So that's all in this video. Thanks for watching.